transit day. Transit day. Transit day, mate. Well, Finally. So with the Mark 1 Transit now back in the shop, and yesterday we managed to pull the engine out of the shipping container. This is a Ford 5 litre V8 with a 5 speed manual uh, gearbox to go on this as well. And today basically we're going to be stripping down the engine, taking the EF5 to the top because we're going to be running carburetor. There's a couple of bits on it like the power steering pump, the alternator, the AC and a couple of other bits that we don't need. Um, so we're gonna be stripping this thing down, bottling up the gearbox and offering it up into the engine bay to see basically where we're at with mounting this thing in. Literally just waiting for Robin to come over um, and then we can start getting the engine and gearbox in place. It's just on the engine crane behind me as a temporary thing so it doesn't fall over because it's only set on some wood. Um, and then what we're going to do is just take the stand out that's holding the front of the transit, um, take that out, put it on axle stands and then we can slide the engine in underneath of it and jack it up to where we want it to go. So we're now off to Noah's to go and get the remaining parts for the transit. Uh, what's actually over there? Got a couple of bonnets, haven't we? So this is all scrap, yeah? I think so, yeah. Yeah, all scrap. Try and keep them yeah, decent. Yeah, don't scrap that bit yet. I just realised that's got like a bunch of bolts there. Engine's now in place and what we're going to do, or what I've got Rob to agree to doing is cutting this bulkhead completely out. Now that wasn't his original plan. What the original plan was to just cut a hole out of the bulkhead and the floor, bring the engine up into the bay, weld some mounts in and bolt the engine in place and then tidy it all up. But with that being said, um, he'd be left with a ton of these holes and there'd be a lot of welding going on. There'd be a bit of filling going on. And I just think like in a area where this engine is going to be getting hot and there's like filler in here, I just don't think they mix um, and it wouldn't be very nice later on down the line. So what we're doing is cutting the bulkhead out, um, cutting apart the floor out, getting the engine in place and bottled in where we want it in the bay and then making a new bulkhead up in and around the engine um, and then that way we're not going to be left with all these holes. It's going to look so much smoother, nicer. Um, I said to him, like, you know, we can put some nice press lines in here as well to give it a bit more strength as well. So he's agreed to that. Um, and I think that is definitely the best option, especially as we're taking this thing concourse and it's going to be really nice by the time we're done with it.
from under here, which was for the old uh, gearbox. And we're literally now going to put the engine back in, aren't we? Yep. Yeah. Right. You're all... friends on Facebook. You're always busy. Mate, did you get that link to their mounts? Yeah, well, I put it in and I can't open it. Hey, really? The link work. Right. Yeah. I'm do, do, panicking because do. I can't get it back. Everyone's going to see what I'm watching. Did you see them? Oh. No, as I said, the link didn't work. Oh man. Look. You know everyone's going to be pausing on this going. Oh. Ooh. Oh, it's working now. Oh. What do you reckon? Know the ones? They look like it. Mate, they look pretty good to me. What do you reckon? I wonder, is it worth giving real steel a quick ring? Real steel? Yeah, hi there, afternoon, my name's Rob. I'm, I'm just calling up, um, just to ask you a little bit of advice and hopefully yep. looking to put an order in. So we've got a Ford 302 V8 uh, attached to a, a manual gearbox. It's, a, we're pretty sure it's an M5R2 gearbox. Okay, I don't know what that is, but um, it's a, 302 is a, um, all very similar to yeah. each other. It's basically just a it's a it's a it's a US um, manual gearbox off like an F one hundred and fifty from the mid nineties basically oh, f f five speed manual. You'll see a picture of two different cross members. Yeah, I can see them. Halfway Str down the page on the there's, right. There's a straight one and a tapered or a, a, like a like a handlebar version, isn't there? A, a dropped one, yes. Dropped one, yeah. And, and then they give you a rubber mount. Uh, the other problem is it depends what the bolt pattern is on the bottom of your transmission. Yeah. Uh, as far as the mount goes, but I've just looked these up. And we haven't got eyes of them. About as much use as a dead frog. <laughs> Literally just got the engine mounts through the post. Um, super, super fast delivery. We end up ordering the ones off of eBay in the end because speaking to Real Steel on the phone, um, they didn't have the ones that we wanted in stock and there was going to be a bit of a wait on them, which we didn't want to wait for. So I was being a little bit impatient. Um, we just winged it and went with the ones on eBay. They look the same. I haven't actually opened them up yet, so I'm now about to unbox them and hopefully they're the ones we want. So nice when you just wing it and order a part and it comes through right. So these are the mounts that we were trying to order from Real Steel. Um, massive shout out to these guys where they come from, American Auto Parts in Surrey. Cheers for that guys, super fast delivery. Um, we ordered these on the Thursday. Obviously we had the bank holiday weekend and they've come through today, which is the Tuesday. So awesome. Um, we do have engine mounts on the engine. They're just wrong. So these are gonna go in replacement of these, which will bolt up like so. 
and then we'll have a bracket welded on here where obviously a bolt will go through these mounts and hang from the brackets on here so pretty simple um, one either side and the mount off the back of the gearbox what do you reckon mate take two yeah mate i'll be soon after our oil spillage last night And, and we figured that out when we started lifting it up from the crane yesterday, there's all the pissing out everywhere. <laughs> and I never thought to check it. I took the oil filter off, nothing come out, but never mind. I've cut the hole out a little bit bigger as well. So we're literally now stropped up, ready to go. We've changed the engine crane as well because the other one wasn't as good as this. So take two and put the engine in and um, hopefully it fits this time. on that cut out. They're looking perfect mate, we're in. Mate, that's, that's about there. Is it? I'd say height wise. What was the prop shaft? Well, I mean we couldn't come higher but then I don't think you're going to get it any higher because you're going to be fouling yeah. the body. I'd say your engine was there, that height. And we've got the engine nice and well back so that we're not going to be worrying about overly weighting the front axle, you know. We've, yeah. Um, I think that sits in there really nicely. With the engine now in place, we can't really do much more with it until we've had a subframe making for the engine, which then means we can bolt it in. I know I make that sound really simple, um, but the van's going off to a local fabricator who's doing it for us. He's taking it like the middle of November and reckons we're going to be getting it back sort of after the Christmas break into the new year. So we can't really make any more progress on this now until we've got the van back. Um, He's also going to be changing it over from being leaf spring suspension so, um, to a more modern coilover suspension. So there's quite an extensive bit of fabricating work to go into it as yet. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here, guys. Um, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Go follow us on Instagram at Madder Customs. And I'll see you in the next one.